Mi nombre es Brenda Torres. I'm Brenda Torres, the, uh, just recently joined as the new executive director of the San Juan Bay Story Program, and I'm here today to help um, moderate the discussion with our next speaker, who many of you already know. She's the EPA Region 2 Administrator. Uh, she's been in, in that position for the past seven years, um, being appointed by President Obama. Um, been a great, great ally and a friend, and um, I would say one of my mentors already. I can actually call her that way, and I'm happy to have her here to brief you about um, the Trash Free Waters uh, program, and from her perspective, which is um, she will bring us uh, the, her wisdom um, and some advice on how to really push forward this program. Uh, with you, Je Judy Think. Good morning, everyone. Great to see you again. We're so excited to have Brenda Torres at the San Juan Bay Estuary Program. If you don't know about it, you should check it out uh, because we stole Javier Laureano, uh, who's now at EPA in New York. Um, so I'd like to start with um, a true confession. Uh, yesterday when I was speaking, I mentioned that we really have to maximize waste reduction, recycling, composting, and then small compliant landfills for things that you ac absolutely can't reduce, reuse, recycle, or compost. And I foolishly used as an example an old toothbrush. Now you can't recycle that. So a very nice woman today handed me a compostable toothbrush. Thank you very much. I stand corrected. And I learned that over two billion plastic toothbrushes end up in oceans and landfills every year. So this is now um, the premise of my remarks this morning. Um, I'm gonna talk to you about trash-free waters, also known, a bit, known by marine debris, gyres in the ocean. Um, it's many, many plastics in the ocean, many, many different names, but by the end, you, you'll get it. So uh, once again, pull out your phones and follow us on tr Twitter. Um, I also wanna make a pitch that you all stay till the end of the day today. I know our friends from US Virgin Islands need to catch an early flight, so you are excused. Thank you for coming all this way. Um, but local folks, uh, the end of the day is really important and we have a fantastic uh, keynote speaker at the end, Felix Aponte. So, if you need to pick up your kids, go get them, bring them back. If it's your turn to cook dinner, you're all having cereal tonight, but um, come back and if you have friends that have not been here all day, uh, text them and tell them to come here this afternoon. So um, as Brenda said, I'm the regional administrator for EPA. It's been an honor to be at EPA for the last seven years working for uh, President Obama. Uh, really good guy. We're going to miss him. So um, the sort of issues that EPA worked on while the president was president was things like plastic in the ocean. And the issue before us this morning is how do we keep 8 million pounds of plastic pollution from entering our oceans every single year? Here is the shocking truth. We are turning our oceans into landfills. We're doing the same to the Caribbean. We're doing the same to wetlands and rivers. We're essentially creating unpermitted, unregulated landfills into our, into our treasured water bodies. This is a serious problem that very few people know about. It's, it's almost hidden. And it's especially urgent in the Caribbean. So here's what you and policymakers need to know. Um, when I first started looking at this issue, I thought, oh, cruise ships were dumping plastic into the ocean. Well, that may happen, unfortunately, but in fact, 80% of um, trash in the ocean comes from the land. It's not dumped from boats. It, it is litter that comes off our streets, it's uh, material that passes through sewage treatment plants. And 80% of the trash in the ocean is plastic. You know that plastics do not easily break down in the aquatic environment. 
They often contain additives, including flame retardants, plasticizers, antimicrobials, and all of that material can leach into the water. As it travels from water body to water body, plastics sometimes pick up pollutants, such as PCBs, heavy metals, and pathogens. The, the pollutants are hitchhikers on the little bits of plastic. So we need a lot more research on how plastic may affect fish and how it may affect people that consume fish. Remember, about 90% of the seafood that enters uh, the U.S. market is imported. So what's happening on plastic in the ocean in distant locations is potentially a health issue for all of us. Very recently, the Brit British chief medical officer announced that she's going to study the human risks of eating seafood containing tiny plastics. Now, how long plastics remain in the aquatic environment depends on a couple things. What kind of plastic is it? Exposure to sun, uh, wave action. And what happens is, let's say you've got a plastic water bottle as an example in the water. The wave action is like a paper shredder and it turns that bottle into smaller and smaller pieces of plastic that build up in the environment. The bad news is so-called biodegradable plastic is not a solution. The United Nations has reported that the use of biodegradable plastic will not reduce the amount of plastics in our waterways because these plastics do not easily break down in the ambient ocean water. Now here's the real challenge. Plastic production in the United States on average has grown about 8% a year since 1940. And in the past 50 years, plastic use has increased 20% worldwide, so that's a little bit of a problem. And over a third of the plastic litter found within 30 miles of a watershed will find its way into the ocean. So it's not just right on the beach, it's things that swept through the watershed. So if you remember one thing I share with you today, one fact, I want you to remember this and I want you to act on it. By 2025, for every three pounds of fish in the ocean, there will be one pound of plastic. Isn't that amazing? For every three pounds of fish in the ocean, there is projected to be one, one pound of plastic. The United Nations has said that over 663 species have been impacted by plastic pollution. Fish, coral, and seabirds often mistake plastic for food and eat it. Sewage treatment plants are a large source of microbead micro pollution because those of you who are familiar with sewage treatment plants, they're not designed to remove little tiny bits of plastic uh, from the waste stream. Those little like size of the grain of sand, they're going to shoot right through the sewage treatment plant and into receiving waters. Microplastics have been found almost everywhere. They've been found at the bottom of the ocean. They've been found in polar ice. So companies that make plastic and sell it to consumers for cheap, and then our water bodies and wildlife suffer the consequences. Uh, taxpayers are expected to deal with the problem, while plastic companies bear no cost for the effect of waste disposal programs, litter collection, recycling, or the damage that is caused when plastics build up in the marine environment. So, you know, there are a few exceptions. Things like uh, legislation like bottle bills, where there's a five cent nickel deposit. There's then a system to get those plastic bottles and other containers into recycling. Um, so how do we tackle a problem this enormous? Where do we begin? I would argue that we first begin with public education. If people don't know there's a problem, there's no way to solve it. And I'm a big believer in when the people lead, the leaders will follow. Um, in 2014, the EPA established our Trash Free Waters program, and we set a goal of zero waste going into waterways in the next 10 years. This is an ambitious goal, but there's too much at stake not to be ambitious. 
EPA just launched, launched a brand new website on trash-free waters. Let me give you the address. It's so new, I didn't have a, a moment to do a slide on it. So it's www.epa.gov backslash trash hyphen free hyphen waters. So www.epa.gov backslash trash hyphen free hyphen waters. That's a really good um, resource for information. So you know that EPA is broken into 10 different regions. Uh, Puerto Rico and the US Virgin Islands is in region two, the best region in the country. And in region two, our work has focused on five major sources of plastic in the marine environment. And we have selected these items because they are the items that are found most commonly during litter cleanups. More and more when groups do litter cleanups, they then document what are they picking up. So thanks um, to Susan Collins, we call it PB5. P is for plastic and B is for bottles, bags, cigarette butts, because of the plastic filters, food service boxes, and micro beads. And I wanna add balloons, um, not just because it starts with B, but someone at EPA recently gave me a balloon. She was out hiking and she found a deflated balloon with an LED light in it. This apparently is the newest thing people like businesses will put, do balloon launches and have lights in them. And then when it comes down, you've got the balloon litter and a little light in it. Whoever thought that up, we're really mad at you. And you should um, take it off the market. Um, there, you know, and, and please don't do balloon launches because what goes up comes down and fish and wildlife often eat it. So let's rapidly go through the bees. Bottles, simple things you can do. Use refillable water bottles and coffee mugs. Soda in beer and milk can be sold in refillable bottles. You just clean the bottles, refill them. You don't even have to worry about recycling. You reuse it. And mandatory deposits called bottle bills get beverage containers off our city streets out of farm fields. And it puts the responsibility on the producer of the material, not taxpayers. 10 states have bottle bill laws, um, and that's, that's something worth, worth looking at. It's been introduced, but not yet adopted in Puerto Rico and the US Virgin Islands. B for bags, use reusable bags. You saw some great examples yesterday and today, and congratulations to both Puerto Rico and the US Virgin Islands. Both have adopted plastic bag bans that go into effect at the end of this month, December 31st and January 1st. So great work, both of these legislatures and both of these governors. But again, when the people lead, the leaders will follow. We knew this happened because of the people. Um, cigarette butts, what can you do? Quit smoking, all right? That's a good. That's a good first step. Um, we're actually working with the American Lung Association to support not smoking, because then we don't have all those darn butts all over the beach. Um, make your school smoke free. Um, the Obama administration just announced that all public housing will soon be smoke free. Um, but if people, you know, and, and I'm not mocking people who are addicted to tobacco, it is a, an addiction, it's really hard to quit, and I really admire people who have quit. So in the meantime, make sure your butts make it to the cigarette butt receptacles. And if they're not outside your business or your school, add them there. Okay, food service boxes. What can you do? Bring your own reusable containers. So think about this. A typical person goes out for lunch. You have a really mediocre sandwich. It's nothing memorable, but it's sustenance. So it takes you about 10 minutes to eat the mediocre sandwich, but the plastic packaging will last decades or even longer. It's not just the box that your sad, sad sandwich came in, but it's the plastic utensils, the condiment packaging, the plastic bag, all for one bad sandwich. 
So there are more and more businesses that allow you to bring your own containers with you. If you're eating on site, use reusable dishes. Microbeads, there's some good news there. President Obama signed the Microbead Free Waters Act into law in December of 2015. This law will prohibit the sale of personal care products containing plastic microbeads by July 2018. So these are the things like little pieces of plastic and face scrubs and toothpaste. Who knew there were little pieces of plastic in our toothpaste? So what you can do before this law takes effect in 2018 is read the ingredient, ingredients carefully. If you see polyethylene or polypropylene, that means your, that product contains microbeads. Next, we can't solve a problem until we have data, and that's where citizen scientists come in. Using trawls, citizens and researchers gather all sorts of plastic in our water body. I'm really happy that EPA's office here in Puerto Rico is launching a new citizen science trawl project early next year, working closely with the San Juan Bay Estuary Program at EPA, will um, train people on sampling techniques. And if you want more information on that, you can contact my EPA colleague, Rachel Graham, or Brenda Torres, who is right here. And I have permission to give you Brenda's phone number. It's 787-725-8165, or btorres at estuario.org. So if you want to jump in on citizen science, we're all ready to go in January. The San Juan Bay Estuary is the only tropical estuary in EPA's national estuary programs. Um, and this is a really important estuary that connects the San Jose Lagoon. Um, we work a lot on dredging the Canyon Martin Benya Channel, which is clogged with de debris. The Canyon Martin Benya community is a great place to launch a comprehensive trash free waters project here in San Juan. So we're really excited to get that work going. What else is next? Well, we can't solve this problem with litter cleanups. There's just too much material. And we love recycling and composting, but recycling and composting won't fix this massive problem. We need to change what is done upstream by changing how we design, manufacture, and use products and packaging. It's all about source reduction. It's not about recycling. It's about source reduction, producing less, saving natural resources and energy, and preventing plastic pollution from entering our treasured water bodies. So here's what you can do. First, work with local businesses to reduce or completely eliminate the use of plastic bags and single-use plastic packaging. Second, I would organize a movie screening of the great movie called Bag It at local schools in your community. Who here has seen the movie Bag It? Okay, a couple people. It's really wonderful and it's a great way to educate people, especially with the plastic bag ban coming in Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Another idea is stop using plastic straws. The New York City public school system has largely stopped using straws since the 80s to save money. And other schools and restaurants can do the same thing by um, eliminating plastic straws and saving a little money at the same time. So you all have other ideas. You have great ideas. EPA wants to hear about them. This is a serious issue. This is a marriage of solid waste issues with water quality issues. Uh, we need every community and every business to take on this issue. We need you to educate. We need you to advocate because time is not on our side. Eleanor Roosevelt said, you must do the thing you think you cannot do. And keeping 8 million pounds of plastic out of our oceans every year is a daunting task, but coming together at this conference puts each of you in a unique position to solve the problem. The marine environment in the Caribbean is just too important 
for us not to take on this issue in a very serious and very sustained way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Yuri, and thank you. This is uh, kind of shocking, uh, definitely. Um, what I want to do now is help, help bring um, the questions you might have, recommendations. Um, Kaira here will be passing um, the mic. Just, do you have a mic? No? Uh, and also, if you feel more comfortable, um, you know, talking in Spanish, feel free to do that. And Kaira will um, translate for you so we can actually have a very um, deep discussion about this. Um, any questions? No? So I, I do have a question for you. Uh, you did, um, and, and you did mention that the, the shocking fact that um, in tw by 2025 we might actually have uh, three tons uh, or one ton per, uh, of, of trash plastic yeah per three pounds of uh, tons actually of, of fish three to one uh, which is kind of shocking and you did gave us um, some recommendations as to how to do this at the citizens level but my question is more at the Caribbean region um, what do you think we uh, as leaders um, from Puerto Rico and the US Virgin Islands should be um, partnering or doing in order to make sure we fight this trend Well, I um, I've been losing sleep over that question. It's it's so hard to identify a comprehensive solution uh, because plastic is coming at us in so many different ways. So I think for the for the first steps is public education. Uh, I think if you were to go to the legislature to promote extended producer responsibility legislation, which they have in Canada and parts of Europe. Um, I think it would be defeated by the plastics industry because um, people don't know about the problem. And so I think an intensive effort at public education, and then what's been happening nationwide is tackling pieces of this, like plastic bag ban. Um, some communities have banned polystyrene. You have to make sure that the substitute is, is, is okay. Uh, plastic bag bans make sense if you replace it with reusable ba bags. When, when you buy a reusable bag and you bring it to the store all the time, like the ones we handed out yesterday, on average they're used 75 times. And it'd be good if you could wash them. Um, so I think it's kind of divide and conquer. You have to look at each part of the waste stream and figure it out while we um, work with uh, policymakers and regulators on a more comprehensive thing. You know, I think fundamentally the businesses that create the plastic should be responsible to take it back and reuse or recycle it. 